Starting to look like home. It's taking shape. Good work, Miss Grimshaw. All right, audio's fixed. Okay, so we have a mission for Dutch that we can do. I feel inclined to do that. Um, we also have a mission for, I'm guessing is that's Lenny. Let's chat with a few folks though, real quick. Morning. Hey, you I did good in town, finding out about that train. Thank you. It was fun. Well, I wouldn't say it was all fun. That's right. We learned about another train we can rob as well. Oh, I'm glad, Eddie. I'm glad. And again, if you have any questions based off of that video, I'm more than happy to answer them. I want to go see what LS is here. Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan. Yes, Miss Grimshaw. One of the girls saw that friend of yours, Mary Gillis, sniffing about. Mary? Yes. I never liked that woman, Mr. Morgan. Funny business. Okay, I'll catch you later then. Okay. You're saying? Hey, I guess it's a bit off topic, but I heard you say in the past guilt's not a feeling, it's a narrative. I would like to ask you to explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, I can do that really quick. So guilt is a judgment. When people when people say I feel guilty, what they're really saying is I I should have done something else. They're casting judgment on a decision they made. But it's not guilt's not an emotional experience. It's an abstract concept that we attach to an emotional experience. And the reason that it's important to talk about guilt as a narrative rather than a feeling is because a narrative is something that you can change. You can shift your judgment about something in a way that's a little bit more empowering and understanding and kind to yourself. Whereas a feeling is not something that you can immediately influence and change. When somebody says, I feel guilty, they're basically saying that like my judgment of myself is set in stone. And that's just not true. And so, like, if you ask a person to describe what guilt feels like, they will usually describe disappointment. They will describe, they will describe, uh, like, anxiety, fear, uncertainty. Like, they, they won't, you can't really, like, pin down guilt as an actual emotional experience. It's just a judgment that we attach to something we did or didn't do. Oh, Mr. Strauss. Herr Morgan. Herr Morgan. Mr. Strauss. You busy, my friend? What can I do you for, sir? Why? I'll cut you in. Loan it. Already? You know how it is. People is happy to borrow off someone like me, but more enthusiastic paying back to someone like you. Of course. Who are they? Hmm, let me see. A Chick Matthews works at Guthrie Farm. He's a hand, I believe. Mr. Robel, the small holder at Painted Sky, runs the operations there, badly. Miss Lily Millet is a ranch maid up at Emerald Ranch. And here was me believing Dutch's bluster about us helping folk. It's legal work, Mr. Morgan. Debtors belong in prison. We are doing them a favor. Ah, I'll make sure they see it in them terms. Ah, Put so the it's... debts in the deed box and try not to kill them. It's very bad for business. Ah, so we've got collections on our team, huh? And Sheld, shame is a shame is not a narrative. Shame's a feeling. Shame is uh, the sense that you're going to be cast out of the group for something that is judged by that group is not um, conducive to you belonging. It's a very uh, primitive experience. Where am I going to go? What's wrong, Sadie? Here with us. Oh, they ain't so bad. It's nasty out there on your own. I know. You'll be safe here. 
At least for now. Till you're back on your feet properly. So, Arthur, when I was in Valentine, nosing about, I think I found something interesting. Of course. What's that, Tilly? Well, I'm not exactly sure. Something about the doctor's office. There's something funny going on there. Saw a bunch of nasty boys going in and none of them coming out. Hmm. Thank you. Maybe I'll go take a look. Anything else? No. Just that. Well, keep looking. Will do. Damn, people got a lot of shit for me. You can stay with us as long as you want. Thank you. It's the least we can do. Yeah, I feel terrible for her. She lost everybody, man. She lost her husband. She's now in a completely foreign area with a bunch of people she doesn't know. So this woman has absolutely no attachments to anything here. There's nothing here that has been yet consistent, reliable enough for her to be able to feel a sense of stability. That's like, I, I mean, isolation on top of grief is a horrible compound. And then couple that, like, isolated in the sense that she's not around anybody that she's learned she can trust. And it just makes it profoundly sad that, like, this woman had us come in, raid that camp, mess everything up, take her out, and then she's somehow just supposed to be with us? Ugh. Aussie Caso, thank you so much for the membership. I appreciate that, friend. Yeah, the only thing keeping her there is survival. Okay, so uh, Mr. Strauss has some has some debts for us to collect. Let's go do that. Idleness is betrayal because it means I work so you don't have to. That's not right, is it? I guess not, miss. You're right not, missy. On! Wow. That's how you set some boundaries. Woo. Miss Grimshaw. Damn. That exchange brings up a very important point, though. A very important point. Which is the interplay between over and under functioners. And we look at this through a behavioral reinforcement standpoint. When you have a person who under functions in a group relative to what their expectations are, it invites other people who are, have a propensity for over functioning to fill that space, particularly if the task that the person is under functioning on is really important. And what happens is, if you're not careful, they start to reinforce each other. So the more I underfunction, the more others overfunction in my stead, which then gets all the tasks completed that I need to have done. Thus, I can continue to underfunction because I'm learning that other folks will fill in for me. So if you're a person that overfunctions on behalf of underfunctioners, but doesn't say anything, and instead sits and resents people for it, you're not actually doing yourself any favor and you're actually reinforcing that person's underfunctioning in the same way that an underfunctioner is reinforcing overfunctioning by remaining underfunctional. So it's on the overfunctioner in this instance to set a boundary with the underfunctioner and clearly state the expectations, which is what Miss Grimshaw just did. And I think that's really cool. It's like she just pointed it out in a very like direct way, but you have to intercept that. And one of the ways that you intercept an over under functioner dynamic is for the over functioner to set that boundary and then back off and allow the under functioner to step up. 
And then what the underfunctioner learns is that as they step in and do stuff, then the overfunctioners back off, and then you can you can send it in a different direction. But that type of feedback loop can be pretty tough to get out of at times. So it's kind of neat to see that. What, Bill? Boundaries don't generally sit well with folks because they represent change. So hey, Mary Beth. Hey. But she got up and did it, right? She recognized that Miss Grimshaw was right. So good for Miss Grimshaw for advocating for herself. How are things with you? I couldn't be. Ah, weaponized incompetence. Yeah, Holland. Um, you know, here's the thing is like people do things that they learn are functional for their relationship to get their needs met. Uh, another common dynamic that you will see is that if you have a person in a group who becomes particularly volatile when you ask them to do something or when you set a boundary with them and then it creates an aversion to the entire group to actually setting boundaries with that person that's incredibly functional like if that person blows up and is so unstable that people start to avoid by avoiding you are reinforcing that behavior you're reinforcing that the volatility will get that person's needs met and that's why people who are particularly volatile, people who react really strongly to things, need to be held accountable. They need to have consistent uh, boundaries set with them, and they need to experience the consequences of those boundaries. It doesn't mean that you can't be empathic towards the person who's highly reactive, but reinforcement works in two directions. It's not a single direction. And we often only look at the reinforcement from the direction of power to subordinate instead of subordinate to power as well like i don't i mean i'm not in the business of victim blaming at all but when we look at things systemically we have to look at the mutual reinforcement that's happening in a given dynamic instead of just one direction because that's where blame tends to come from we need to look at these things holistically Exactly, Phoenix, right? But the, they got to be careful because if you overfunction on behalf of underfunctioners, uh, underfunctioners never have to be held accountable. Okay, uh, let's go do this one. Go hop on our horse. Where is our horse? Oh, there he is. Uh, I will not do GTA 5, Koo. Um, Get that horse out of here. Down. GTA 5 is a game that I've played like three times, and Get it. I just don't see that one being uh being on the list at this point. Come on, boy. Oh yeah, this is your this is your nightly reminder to put chat in live chat instead of top chat if you want to see everything. What would you say would be the best course of action for Sadie right now given her situation of being so isolated? I don't think it's really on Sadie to do much of anything other than to just kind of open herself up to chatting with folks, right? Like she's accepting influence from people that are sitting down and talking to her. I think it's on us in the camp to show her she's welcome. It's on us to bring her in. She's allowed to be standoffish to us. I think if we expect anything more from that from her, that's really unfair. So I think it's on Sadie to monitor the group and to see if people are making moves that show that she's welcome and then to respond to those moves. But it's on our camp to be the ones that show that she's welcome. A friend of mine recently said they're trying to avoid saying the word should as they felt like most of that use is rooted in shame or something. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I don't think eliminating something like that completely is particularly great, but I will say that shoulds are often reflections of judgments, and if shoulds are creating problems more than they are helping somebody, then yeah, probably not a great idea. Who's this guy? Well, hey there, partner. Come take a look at this. What do you got? Look at this, my friend. Tobacco. Nature's gift to us all hmm. focuses the mind like nothing else. Whatever you say. Well, I say, why buy it off the shelves when you can make your own? 
I mean, well, I guess. Plenty left here if you're interested. I'd best keep moving. I mean, you don't just take tobacco raw out of the earth. There you go. But I will take it because if I can sell it, that'd be great. By the way, chat, judgments are not all bad. Like, judgment, we talk about judgment as if it's this really nasty, awful thing. We make judgments all the time. There are times where shoulds are completely useful. For example, if I dead name somebody and then I go, I shouldn't have done that, I'd argue that's a good judgment, right? Like, that's, that's, a, that's an appropriate time for a should. So eliminating shoulds completely, I don't think is useful. Like yeah. there's there's plenty of use for judgment. If you're averse to judgment on the whole, you are missing out on doing better. Ariels, thank you so much for the membership. Appreciate that, friend. Yeah, we all cast judgment. Judgment's not a terrible thing. It, it depends on what you do with those judgments. What's dead naming? Uh, if a trans person changes their name relative to their gender identity and then you continue to call them their name that they were born with, that's dead naming. So, for example, calling Elliot Page by the name that he was uh, prior to being Elliot is dead naming. It's not cool. Really, really disrespectful and shitty. All right. One of Strauss's debtors was last seen in this area. Search the area to find them and reclaim the debt. All right. Now, the thing about money, and money has a tendency to raise the intensity of situations like this, debt is something that people tend to experience a lot of shame about. So we're going to we're going to approach this with some extreme caution here. Uh, sloppy, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on context i don't know that i i don't know that i'm comfortable enough making that generalization yet i don't i don't know him well enough yet i mean i think it can be functional for him i think it can be harmful if he causes harm but knock knock mr robe god damn it english uh, you me, speak English? Me, uh, um, Silesia. Yeah, good uh, for you. Silesia. I'm here for money. Do you borrow from a German man? Aha, uh -huh. uh, German. Uh, um, uh, mein Herr, uh, uh, sprechen das, uh, this, uh, uh, nah, the Kaiserreich. I don't yeah? speak German neither. I'm here for money. Money. That you borrowed from Leopold Strauss. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Leopold Strauss. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's time to pay. Where is it? Oh, well, no, I have nothing. It's very bad winter. We've all had a bad winter, pal. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, oh, no. No. Nye, nye. Now, you remember where you're keeping that silver? Potrzebuję trochę czasu. Znajdę ci pieniądze. No, still don't understand you. I mean, he very well might not have the money, man. I'm not cut out to do this shit. God damn it! You have a debt to Herr Strauss. Pay up. Stop! You stim I'm shiwe. I mean, me continuing to threaten him is not going to magically make money appear. Uh. No, 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 please, no, no, have money, but, but I have this, it's, it's good, it's good, it's valuable, it's, it's Warsaw, yes. I have your things, okay? I have anything in here or out there? Yes. Now that's a fair compromise. All right, we got there. 
I mean, this guy's terrified. And he has every reason to be. First and foremost, this guy is in a foreign country where he does not speak the dominant language, which is already an outrageously vulnerable space to be in. Now he is in debt to folks of the dominant group, and that is even more terrifying. Now, do I think he should have taken the money if he couldn't pay it back? Yes. But you know, speaking of systems and bi-directionality, Mr. Strauss takes a risk by doing this. Like, when you lend folks money, you do take a risk, especially if you're doing it. Like, I understand that maybe this is legal work, but, like, this is also something that Mr. Strauss takes. He takes a risk on this. I'm not trying to say it's okay that this guy isn't paying his debt. At the same time, if the guy doesn't have the money, he doesn't have the money. Now, I appreciate that he is willing to troubleshoot this with me and is willing to let me take some assets from him, hopefully worth enough to pay off that debt. If he's willing to part with some things, he gets by without getting his shit kicked in by me. And he learns never to borrow money from Mr. Strauss again. And then we're going to go back to Mr. Strauss and hopefully say, stop lending people money like this. Like, you're being a dick by charging outrageous interest and by doing this when you know full well that people can't pay you back. You're, you're, you, if this is more about power than anything else, I don't like that. I don't want to be party to it. So we'll take some stuff out of this guy's house and we'll let him go. Because I feel bad for the guy. Jesus Christ, if you, being in the Wild West like this, not being able to speak the language, oh, what a terrible spot to be in. We have to be mindful of our dominant group identity here. This is scary for this man. Now let me see what you got, sir. Don't even speak English. Who cares, Arthur? Jesus. You know, the same people that bitch about a guy like this not speaking English are the same people that will bitch that when they go to a foreign country, they don't speak English. Like, I'll bet you if Arthur Morgan went to France and everybody spoke French, he'd be like, why isn't anybody speaking English around here? Americans are so bad about that shit, man. I hate the whole, like, if you don't speak English, you automatically suck mentality. What do you have, sir? A pipe? Wait a minute. Dutch wanted a pipe. Yeah, no kidding, DL. This cowboy guy comes in and starts, like, threatening to beat the shit out of him. I don't know. It just feels gross. Why didn't Levi go do this bidding? Oh, I get why he doesn't do this. Because he said, people don't... People don't give me my money because I'm not threatening. So he sends a goon out to go get it for him. And this guy's just got to sit and watch me loot his stuff. Ooh, okay. Very valuable, good. Not good yet. Some fine brandy. What else we got in here, sir? What am I missing? Oh, I got these wardrobe things. Okay. Pack of smokes. And also, look at this guy. This guy's complying. I want to reinforce that. Strauss didn't even tell... Well, he might have told us what the amount was. A silver no. earring. No, no, no. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, man. We just take a family heirloom? Hey, man. Look. 
both of us gotta both of us gotta get something out of this brother i i don't really know what to tell you man you you borrowed money you couldn't pay back i'm i'm get up, take off. i need i must eat Prosho. okay that should about cover things Return to the debt, to the camp funds, or collect another debt. All right. You have a good day, sir. Why didn't trust somebody like Javier or Charles to collect a debt? Why is he always just relying on one person to do it? Do you think it's a trust issue or anything like that? Um, well, as it relates to Charles uh, I could and Javier, I could see it possibly being racism, to be completely honest with you. Uh, the other thing is... I mean, maybe it is a trust thing. I think people trust that Arthur's going to get shit done. I mean, hell, I've been here for 20 years. So there's probably some reliability in Arthur. They trust his judgment. But who knows, right? Also, I mean, we also play as Arthur. So if he sent Javier or Charles to do it, we wouldn't get the opportunity to play the game. So I do understand that part of it as well. But yeah, Strauss gave us a piece of paper, so I, I, I'm sure we have that information. I just didn't look at it. In fact, actually, maybe I'll take a look at it right now. Let's see. List of debtors. Illy Millet, Robble, Chick Matthews. Doesn't really tell us what the amounts are, though. Is this your first Thread Dead Redemption playthrough? Yes, it is. This is completely blind. I've never played this before. I'm not going to steal this guy's horse. I just want to make sure maybe there's a little something in here that we can, we can grab. Actually, no, that's... Well... All right, I'm gonna take these oat cakes, but that's that's gonna be it, man. I don't know. We we did a number on this guy already. He's got to eat. I feel bad for him. Go back to camp. Yeah. I had to check my own conscience there. What the hell? Okay there. Oops. Um. Let's get some food real quick. Oh, it didn't kill it. There we go. What? Oh no! No! There we go. Gotta get some food for camp while we're out, you know? Come on. I always, always, I would always watch your Last of Us vids while playing Dying Light. The game doesn't have incredible writing on it, like some Tears, Detroit, or even this. But I would still like to see your take. Are you talking about Dying Light? Is this the first animal I've killed? I haven't been here. No, it's not the first one. Well, I wanted to make that a quick painless death for the deer, but yeah. hey, did my best. Got a little rain coming in. Wait, do I have to take the corpse to get the meat? I thought I got the I thought I got the meat off yeah. the corpse. That's a serious question. Do I have to actually take the corpse to camp in order for that to do anything for us? 
You can take the corpse. Oh, all right. Well, that's good to know for next time. Yes, I plan to play through the entirety of this game, and yes, I have played Red Dead 1. There's meat in that. No. All right. My bad. Whatever. Let's go return these debts. Donate recovered debt to the camp funds. We'll do that. My horse does not have a name yet. God, what a beautiful game. Oh. Isn't it good to be out of that goddamn snow? Why are you so chipper? We're gonna be good. We are gonna be great. Faith, my son. Faith. All right, we're gonna talk about the power of language for a second. Because I've seen this enough times from Dutch. Where Dutch says things like, we're going to be good, we're going to be great. We are going to reach our potential. So, some of us might look at that and think to ourselves, Yeah! That's awesome! Let, let's find our greatness! But when Dutch says that, he is also silently saying something else. Which is that right now, we are not great. We're seeing a window into Dutch's judgment of our group and our circumstance by how vehemently attached he is to we're going to be great. Because if we were great now, he wouldn't say that. Now, I don't quite understand what Dutch is wanting more than what we have. We have safety. We have freedom. We have money, we're close to a town, we have each other, we have our health, we have food. So I don't know what he's angling at, but if you're the group here and you constantly hear Dutch say stuff like this, you are going to also internalize, we suck right now in the eyes of our leader. And it would be hard to get inspired after a while if the only thing you ever hear is what we're going to get to instead of an acknowledgement of what we are. It's just, you know, it comes out very subtly in some of this language. And by the way, that's a word to the wise to watch your language. Because anytime you say something, there's a chance that you're passively also saying something else. Like, Dutch probably doesn't realize that's what he's doing. But every time I hear him say that, what I hear is, we suck right now. Yeah, kind of like Make America Great Again. Right, it suggests that America sucks right now. Yeah. Give all debts. Turn debt thirty-seven eighty-nine. Your share five dollars eleven cents. Use the ledger to purchase a camp upgrade. Ooh. Hello, Mr. Hello, Jack. Oh, this is badass. The front page of the ledger shows recent contribution to camp funds from all companions. All right, John Marston, dollar seventeen. Bill Williamson, dollar sixty. Charles forty cents. Javier five bucks. Sadie 84 cents, Charles 3 bucks, John 825, Bill 326, hey. Arthur 25, Arthur 25, Arthur 15 15, Arthur cash 50 bucks. You know what this look is, right? You know why I'm making this face. I don't know about all of you, but I want my leader on this page. Where the hell is Dutch? I'm not worried about everybody else. I'm worried about Dutch. I 
I could totally understand if if nobody else was in here. I don't care. I don't care about the others. The others are doing their best. The others, the others are not the leader of the camp. The others are just trying to make ends meet. Dutch ain't on this list. Dutch walks around wearing these fine gold rings with the 10 gallon hat and the trench coat and the pinstripe three piece suit. Yet my man ain't donating shit to the public kitty. Which to me is poor leadership. I want to see my man put the first dollar in the box. I want to see him regularly contribute. I want to see in tangible terms, I am taking care of my people. And I don't see that in this ledger. I'm glad there are names on this ledger because this helps us know who to hold accountable. And who we need to hold accountable on this ledger are the leaders, not the followers. Look at that. I mean, hell, even uh, Sadie bringing in 84 cents. She's doing her best. I see nothing from Dutch. I'm watching. I'm watching, man. All right. Strauss's medicine wagon. Increased total supplies include snake oil to restore dead eye and bitters to restore stamina. Restock 15. All right, Arthur's Munitions increases armory supplies, adds repeater ammo and arrows for 60 bucks. Camp horse station by a horse station, a place to retrieve horses from the stables or recall your main horse to camp. That's a lot of money. A chicken coop. Buy a chicken coop for the camp, add nutrition to all camp stews, dead eye boost when consuming stew. Leather working tools. Buy some leather working tools for Pearson. Gain access to extra crafting options. Resupply the wagon. Send somebody to town to get more items already stocked. Upgrade Dutch's lodging. Encourages others to donate. Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? Dutch wants something comfier? You can kiss my ass, brother. If I'm Dutch, I'm making sure that everybody else is comfortable before me. That is the burden of leadership, my friend. Absolutely not. You can kiss my ass. Less bland. Increases total provisions, add fresh fruit and basic canned goods. I kind of like that. That seems easy or reasonable. Uh, if we get Pearson better tools, he can make extra gear. I do like that. Let's go ahead and purchase that. Because if people can carry more, that means we can bring more to camp, so. How did you get on, Herr Morgan? Called in on the small holder, Robo. Didn't even speak English. <laughs> good, very good. My pleasure. Uh, well, if it's pleasure you're after, there is one other. This farmer preacher fellow I met in Valentine, Mr. Downs. The opinionated little do-gooder? Yeah, hey, I know the one. I certainly know the type. Thank you, Herr Morgan. There's no need to thank me. Like you said, it's a pleasure I'm after. He's more slippery than he seems. I've tried being polite. Don't take any nonsense. Nonsense? Me? If he doesn't have the money, beat him. Well, I usually do. I know. I know. Now, if y'all are thinking, wow, Dr. Mick, you're being really critical of Dutch. Why are you being so critical of Dutch? There's a reason for that. You get a lot of information about leaders when you show open criticism in their direction, particularly as a group, and when you hold them accountable. I don't want a leader who gets defensive at every single piece of criticism or you know, piece of information that I throw out. I need to see that a leader can take it, that a leader can take ownership of the things that are failing in the group. Right? Like... That is our right as followers to be critical of leadership. And if I and and Dutch ought to invite that in. He ought to say, I welcome your feedback. I'm doing the best I can. I know that I'm not perfect, but I welcome your feedback. I can't guarantee I'll do stuff with it, but I want to know what your needs are because I want to make sure that you're feeling free, that you're feeling satisfied. That that's that is paramount to me. 
if Dutch gets really defensive and he just backs down or he gets aggressive or he starts talking shit when we when we give him a hard time for some of this stuff, like the fact that he needs new lodging before everybody else, that is not indicative of good leadership to me. That's indicative of this is about him be getting reassurance for like who he is as opposed to paying attention to his role. I think it's important to be critical of leadership. It's, it's, it's important to be um, conditional in your leaders, particularly if you've selected them. And to just blindly follow and say, this person's just great no matter what they do, that's how you get taken advantage of. It's how you get taken for a ride. So protect yourself by holding leaders accountable. That's what we're doing with Dutch lately. Now, I made a mistake. Arthur, Arthur, how you been? I've been real worried. What do you want? Don't be like that. Uh, just, a, just a few bucks, and I'm short. Get lost. Well, oh, I'll go try someone with a heart. You do that. All right, well, I should be getting on. Yep. Dutch seems to almost expect people to follow him blindly without question. Do you think there's a reason that he doesn't like the questioning or criticism? Well, he hasn't really shown that he dislikes it. Um, I think because, it, well, because instead of looking at it as criticism of his role, he's looking at it as criticism of who he is. Like, if you don't separate the things you do from who you are, when people critique the thing you do, you make it, you personalize it and make it about yourself. And honestly, that's a thing that many of us need to be aware of. There is a difference between the things you do and who you are. And if you don't differentiate yourself in that way, like if Dutch doesn't differentiate himself as like my role as a leader from who I am as a person, and then if we critique his leadership, he's going to take it personally and he's going to defend it as an attack on his personhood instead of an attack on his role. So if he gets particularly volatile, that tells me that he has over-internalized his role as a leader instead of holding himself accountable and thinking critically about that. Like, you, you got to be really careful to do that. You can get pretty good insight into the things that people uh, attach to their sense of who they are by how reactive they are when you Mr. criticize Morgan. it. Mr. Morgan. Mr. Pearson. Quite a country. Quite a country. You know, sometimes I'm glad I left the Navy. Too many men. <laughs> Too many men. This world... Far more genteel, huh? <laughs> I never figured running in a bunch of outlaws would be the genteel option. <laughs> well, I've seen things, sir. I've seen terrible things. I bet he has. Why is Pearson in the ledger either? Uh, I mean, Pearson makes stuff for folks. Like I said, I'm not going to get hard on people who are in the camp for whether they contribute to the ledger. I'm going to be hard on people like Dutch. Love it. Who's your favorite character in the game so far? Um... I don't know that I have one yet. I'm still early on. All right, there are any kind of upgrades, crafting upgrades. Let's take a look. Mr. Here. Morgan, bring me some materials, and I'll be glad. Arthur's to make lodging. John's lodging. Chuck wagon. Wait, we're just adding skulls. Ah, oh, what a what what a waste. All we're doing is just adding skulls to shit. Pearson, I regret my investment in your activities. Sure. 
Uh, I don't like throwing around the phrase narcissism, Sean. It's a very overused term. Uh, Dutch doesn't strike me as a narcissist. He's just... He cares very much about what he's doing. Um, what is... Rambles through the woods and plains. A field guide to the botanical kingdom. care to read about plants. Dear Arthur, I've written this letter a hundred times or more and I cannot get it right. It's me. You know it's me from the bad handwriting. I know I said when we last spoke and I was going off to get married that we would not speak again. I know I said a lot of things and I meant them. I suppose, at the time. But I'm not so proud as to not speak to people who care for me, or cared for me. I've been in Valentine for a couple of months. I had some bad luck, and, well, it's a long story and not an interesting one. But I am here for now. I saw a couple of the girls, or whatever the polite term is for them, that ran with you and your associates in town, and I heard tell of a man who sounded like you. I would love to see you again if you could spare me a little bit of your time. I'm renting a room at Chadwick Farm, just north of Valentine. Yours, Mary Linton. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm down. I'm absolutely down. Give me relationship dynamics. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Oh, baby. Okay, okay. All right. So a place just north of Valentine. There she is. Mary Linton requested your help in her letter. Let's go. Lady time. That's right, Arthur. You power walk your ass over to this horse. We got an ex to talk to. Let's go. Let's go. You get a text from your ex. You get a little letter sitting on your table. Ride like the wind. Let's go. We got some rectifying of the relationship into doing here, folks. Watch out for the sheep. Okie dokie. Oh, baby. Look at what we snagged. Dutchie's dog's body. I told you he'd show. All right, boys. Let's introduce ourselves. Oh, shit. All right, fella, fellas. I got. I ain't got time. I ain't got the time. Why wasn't my gun shooting? Why wasn't my gun shooting? I had that honest, honest head. anticlimactic fellas come on now I ain't got time for this shit I got a lady to get to the love of God don't you do this to me again I was reloading oh lame oh whatever thou dot that did snuff it I had a lady to get to, and these assholes just show up. That was a random encounter, I think, yeah. We'll just pretend it didn't happen. Somebody help me out. I was 
in the army. I'll always stop for a veteran, especially one that's wearing a blue coat. Hey, buddy. I'm too old to get a job, mister. Way too old. Can't we be friends? <sighs> sure. I'm so happy. I ain't had a friend in a long time. Long, long time. My last friend died. Weren't my fault. They said it was, but they was wrong. It's fun being with you, mister. Can I hold you a second, mister? Can I? We just met, brother. If you need a hug, I'll oblige. Okay, just quickly. That felt good. It's nice to be held sometimes. Well, we used to hold each other in the war. You got sad eyes, mister. Like you've seen sad things. Remember with kindness. Oh. Wow. It actually like How you holding up? I don't know, man. That like actually like kind of hits me. Like I, That dude was in the war. He probably I mean Mister, the Civil War, I'm guessing. Um That dude has seen some shit. And I mean we don't treat veterans well now, let alone back in the 1800s like this. That dude's seen some, adverse, some real adversity, and I'm guessing that uh, the way he was affected by the war is absolutely probably affecting him now. I'm not going to call it PTSD, obviously, because I haven't assessed it, but like, there's no doubt that that guy's seen some trauma. I mean, look, he's got his arm, his arm is off. And if that guy's experiencing some significant adversity and doesn't have the coping skills post-war to be able to find employment or to engage in meaningful relationships, then I give this guy all the credit in the world for asking directly for what he needed there. Like, he made it very clear. He's like, look, man, I just need a friend. I need somebody. I just need somebody who I can talk to. And it'd be nice if I could be held. Back when we experienced adversity in the war, we'd sometimes hold each other, and that was the only semblance of comfort we could ever have. And I'm guessing nobody wants to do it because they see him as a beggar, they see that he's dirty. And so we obliged there. And if he had asked me for money, I would understand that too. But he didn't. That guy just needed connection. That guy needed to be acknowledged. And a lot of times, like, we, we undervalue, or underestimate, I should say, the power of human interaction. And that's what that guy needed there. And we provided it to him. And we didn't do it for our own self-edification. We did it to help that guy out. That guy might have a great day or two now. Hell, maybe even a week. Knowing that I took the time to acknowledge him. Like, that, that's a really, like, tender moment there. That was really cool. And it goes against everything Arthur always says about himself. That he's some bad dude. I just, I really like that. I, I don't, you know, don't underestimate the power of human connection. You know, if your initial aversion to that guy was like, oh God, here's another asshole that's going to ask me for money. You ought to like check your values there. That guy just needed somebody to talk to. And even if I didn't give him money, right? Like if he had asked for money, maybe I would have done that. Maybe I wouldn't have. But I still gave that guy a bit of connection and humanity. So that's cool. And I'm not going to make it about me. I'm not going to pull my uh I'm not going to pull my camera out and take a picture of myself with him. Okay. And flaunt it on social media. We did that for the humanity of it, not for the vanity of it. You do shit like that for vanity. Uh in my opinion you kind of suck. Don't do that shit for vanity. Don't do that shit because you think it looks good to other people. Do that shit because you actually connect with the humanity of that experience.
Yeah, I've read the journal, Sloppy. Oh, boy. animations in this game are incredible all right let's go see what 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 the old the old wish it would have been ball and chain has to say i i reckon i did see your letter on my not stand when i got to my tent oh she likes my musk rick i'm not i'm not taking a i'm not gonna take a bath here i'm gonna let those pheromones fly free baby we're walking in with some real stench, some pheromones. I go get that bath. She's going to smell that woman on me. She's going to she's gonna smell the other woman on me. She's going to smell the soap. She ain't going to smell the man. She's going to smell the soap. I ain't about that. Let's go. Bring those pheromones in. She knew what she was getting into when, I show, when she wrote that letter. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you, ma'am. Is Mrs. Linton in? I'll go see. Mrs. Linton, a collar for you. Hello, Arthur. Mary. I heard you and your friends was around. I... Okay. Where's, um... Where's what's-his-name? Died. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Happened a while ago. Pneumonia. Bad business. Sure. So, uh... Well, you've been... <clears throat> you've been made a widow and... Come here looking for me, is that it? No, ain't like that, Arthur. Oh, okay. Listen, Arthur, I... I'm... My family. I need your help. You mean the family that always looked down on me? And you want me to help? It's my little brother, Jamie. I always liked Jamie. At least compared to the rest of them. He's broken Daddy's heart. Daddy has a heart. Don't make me beg you, Arthur. My money, my life, me. I wasn't good enough. I'm sorry. We need your help real bad. Little Jamie's joined the Chelonians, that strange religious order. Good for him. They're quite mad, Arthur. They'll kill him. You're the only person he'd listen to. So, I'm too rough to marry into your family, but it's okay to ask me to help in saving your family. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to help me, but... But I think of you often. A long time ago now. I'm begging you, Arthur. I say let Jamie live Jamie's life and not the nightmare that his daddy dreamed up for him. Jamie's so innocent, Arthur. Please. Arthur, will you help me? <sighs> oh, man. They're really going to give me this choice? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, mm.
Wow. All right, I'm going to talk through this here. So I have a great deal of respect for Arthur's boundaries here. I mean, I'm inclined to say that he's more in the right. Like, I understand that she's desperate. That is a hell of a move. Like, that's a hell of a move. I'm not necessarily, you know, all aboard with, like, let your own personal vendettas get in the way of making the right decision, but I don't... I mean, this is having your cake and eating it, too. Like, it's true. Like, if Arthur's like, look, if I'm the guy that you think about often, and I'm the guy that you reach out to when your family's under duress... Yet, I was cast aside for whatever reason because there were other folks that, I mean, he is well within his right to be like, what the hell? Where does this come from? And at the same time, like, if Mary legitimately was not into Arthur, that's okay. I'm not suggesting she should have been. I, I'm not I'm not sitting here going like, well, you know, because you put me in the friend zone, fuck you. That's not what I'm saying here. We are getting massively triangulated into this in a way that just doesn't feel comfortable. And as I teach to all of you so often, you don't want to get triangulated into matters like this. Like, if that kid is so frustrated with his family that he went off to run and join a religious cult, that's an indictment on the family. If the family feels that strongly about wanting to go get that kid out, that's on them. You're going to call me all these years later and try to leverage the old emotional connection we had to get me in? I, I'm sorry, Mary. I just can't. No. This isn't I'm for me sorry, to get involved with. Mary. I like Jamie. But you and me, after all that's happened, you're going to have to find someone else to run your errands. Okay. Arthur, I miss you. Yeah, I miss you too. It's all in the past now. Take care of yourself. Sure. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I mean, I could. Also, Anonymous, thank you for the membership. I really appreciate that. No. No. I, it's this isn't my game to 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 jump into here, Mary. You you This is what healthy boundaries looks like. In my opinion. Is Arthur saying, "Look, you can't come out of the woodwork like this out of nowhere." and leverage what we used to have in order for me to get involved with another person on a decision that they made completely in isolation from you. If Mary had asked me to do something to help her specifically out, I could maybe get on board with that. But she's asking me to intervene with a family member who made his own choice for reasons that Arthur seems to understand. If I say yes to that, that enables Mary's behavior. That enables Mary to say, I'm going to keep Arthur at a distance and only bring him in when I need him. And I have more self-respect than that. I'm worth more than that. And that's what Arthur's saying. I deserve better than that, Mary. I don't deserve for you to bring me around only when you need my muscle. 
I deserve for you to bring me around because you want me around as a person. You're going to come out of here and just and just be like, yeah, I need you. At least build a relationship with me first. At least reconnect with me first. Show me that you miss. Don't say I miss you to use that as leverage in order to get me to do something for you. Say that because you mean it. I just, I can't do that. So, I mean, if that means... If that means that we missed out on an, on an entire quest line, I'm okay with that. I just, I can't, I can't make that decision. Uh, or like, I, I, that just doesn't feel right at all. I would, I would never in a million years. Um, like if I was, if I was consulting with Arthur there, I would never have told him to do that. Like I, I, I would have told him not to get involved. Do you think she meant it considering she said, I miss you after he turned her down? She may have, and that's okay. And, and Arthur said, I miss you. I miss you too. Yeah. If Jamie came to me directly, Chico, that's a really good point, right? Like I could certainly say, well, Hey, if Jamie wants help getting out of this, by all means, have him reach out to me. That's okay. That's perfectly appropriate. But he didn't ask for that. Boy. Yeah. Sorry, Mary. But, nope. Let's go, uh... Let's go collect some more debt. I need a I need a palate cleanser after that. That was deep. Setting boundaries and working along your own self-worth is not always easy, chat. It's not always easy. There are times where you have to make very difficult decisions where you think to yourself, man, I really want to help. I really want to do this. But you have to evaluate whether that is actually in the best interest of your self-worth. Does that actually reflect the values I have about myself? And if I take that, the answer is no. Now we're the one that got away. Yeah, we are. I didn't do that out of spite, by the way. I didn't do that as a like, you know, fuck you for not dating me back in the day. That's not why I did that. I did that because that's a legitimately unfair proposition. What does triangulation mean in this context? So triangulation is when there is a dyadic issue. If there's anxiety between two people, in this case, we have Mary and Jamie. There's an issue between the two of them. Jamie may not know that it's an issue, but Mary has certainly expressed it as being one. So what people do when they experience distress in dyadic relationships is they often, in an attempt to avoid the intensity of that, they will pull in a third party and they believe that that will mitigate the anxiety. But what it actually does is it stabilizes it. A triangle is the most stable form of architectural structure. So they'll bring a third party in, in this case, Arthur, to handle the or disperse the anxiety between the dyadic relationship. And so Jamie said, or so Mary says, can you go confront Jamie and get him out of that cult? That's roping me in to a agenda that isn't my own. It has no influence on me. Whether Jamie's in that cult doesn't affect me at all. So I am now doing Mary's bidding. When in reality, the way that you detriangulate yourself, the way that you maintain healthy relationships is to set a boundary that says, this is between the two of you. I will get involved insofar as it affects me. I will advocate for my own boundaries and my own mental health within this, but that's between you and him. Mary, if you've got an issue with Jamie, you talk to him. You reach out to him. You do that. You express your needs. If your family's having an issue, as a family, go find him and figure this out. This is not for me to figure out. This is not mine. This is yours. And you are accountable for the amount of distress tolerance you have relative to figuring this out. But you can't make this my problem. So if you ever find this 
in your own life, you got to set that boundary. And if you're the person who feels the desire to triangulate somebody in, you ought to realize that you're accountable for your dyadic relationships. Other people are not. These guys getting raided? I'll help you folks out. You were kind to me the other night. Damn, that guy's a tank. Oh my god. I don't have any aim tonight. We would have to go out of our way to do that, Celery. Absolutely. This is why reconnecting with your ex is always a bad idea. Not always. I get that you're joking, Mona, but... <laughs> kind of living that right now. Married friends are going through a divorce, and there's been some issues in them roping me and mutual friend into their business. Yep. Set boundaries. Did I lose him? No shit. That sucks. Well, we we did our best. We tried. I mean, to be fair, he was kind of a dick to those kids, but man, what are they gonna do without some direction? We gotta go. Let's go check on him. I mean, we'll probably loot him first. Where are the kids? Shit, are the kids even here? Did they run? Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. I mean, that apple was going to go bad anyway, so I suppose I might as well take that. Damn it! That sucks! I really like those guys. Maybe they went to get help? Yeah, we'll find out. You're alright, boy. Bummer. Well, we did what we could. I accept the outcome. That's what happens, man. You can't win them all. I wonder what percentage of players who have played this game have actually said no to Mary. Hey, hey, this way. Easy, easy. You gotta help me out here, mister. Can you? Please. I've been on the run for days now. Uh, if you could help me with these shackles, I, I just might have a chance. So how'd you end up like this? Just shoot the damn chains already. Come on. Just shoot the chains off, please. I'm done for otherwise. You're gonna need to give me some information, partner. You know what? I respect it. I'm gonna assume that they did you wrong, friend. You know? Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Perfect. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I got no money to give you, but... I think I might got something even better. Some of those fellows talked about this old crone up north of Strawberry. Got herself a tidy sum locked away. Maybe just stories, but 
They were sure excited. Oh, yeah? Why'd I be interested in that, huh? Um, I don't know, just a hunch. It's up to you, friend. Good luck to you, partner. Okay, boy. Good luck to you. All right. Let's go collect ourselves a debt, chat. Coming in. Night Rider. I mean, I'm fine letting that guy go. Whatever. He went through the business of escaping. I don't know what he was in for. We'll help the fella out. Downs Ranch. Search for Thomas Downs. It's nighttime. Oh, Thomas Downs! Downs! Where are you? Oh, Tommy Downs! All right, sir. I do declare you owe some money. What's up, dog? I will pet your dog, and then I will be in to collect Mr. Downs. Your guard dog does not scare me, sir. Oh, Mr. Downs. Downs! Ah, Mr. Downs. A little nighttime hoeing, huh? I can respect it, sir. You, uh, uh, whatever do you want? <coughs> I get that you're just trying to make a peaceful living, sir. Oh, come here, you maggot. Please, sir. I'm, I'll... Really? Whoa! Certainly, would you? Oh, please. I have a family, sir. Please. I don't care about your family. You owe me money. Why'd it have to come to this, huh? Believe me, sir, I didn't want this either. You ain't such a do-gooder, are you? If you're running out on debts... I'm I'm not running anywhere. I'm... I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing my best for you. You are a slippery little bastard. But I got you now. Please, please, show some compassion. Please. Strauss told me you needed a beating. You saying he was right? What will that solve? Nothing. Pay the money, you'll make this stop. You got the money or what? Now, wouldn't paying up have been a little easier? Your dad's caught you, mister. And it ain't letting go. I don't want to hit him. Pay the... Money. Sir. If I'm here, there's a reason I'm here. If you've been good, this wouldn't be happening. <sighs> you borrowed money from my business partner, Herr Strauss. You owe him, you took the money. He wants it back, what's not to understand? <laughs> Where's our money? I don't have it. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife or your family or something. Right, Arthur. We chill. ain't your idea of <gasps> charity. Is that clear? <coughs> Thomas! What are you looking at? Thomas! I said what you looking at, woman. My husband isn't well. If we could just have more. Like I said, we ain't nobody's idea of charity. Get us the money.
Yo, what's up, Zine? Hey! Friends of Zine and Zine, hello, my friends. It is my distinct pleasure to know that I share a platform with you, sir. Those of you coming along with Zine, I'm sure many of you know who I am. I am Dr. Mick, licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. And this is Game Sessions with a Therapist, where I play cool games and use them to illustrate psychological concepts. We are playing Red Dead Redemption 2. It is a blind run. It is, I use these games to illustrate different psychological concepts. I use them to talk about relationship dynamics and to educate the masses. And so if you are interested, if that sounds really interesting to you, I recommend that you stay and hang out. Uh, I really appreciate you all stopping by. Zine, I hope you had a wonderful stream over here in YouTube land. I hope you had a great time. It was great to stop by and say hey to you earlier. Uh, if you all don't follow Zine, Zine is, Zine is doing some streams on YouTube, some on Twitch right now. At least that's my understanding. So make sure that if you haven't subscribed to Zine on YouTube that you take a second to do that. But I appreciate you all being here. If you're chatting, if you're lurking, if you're watching the VOD right now, thank you so much for taking the time to consume my content. Please share it with folks if you think that it would be to their benefit. If you think that this would be a cool way for them to learn stuff. Take a second and hit the like button below this video. It helps immensely for the algorithm and the discoverability of my channel. I also encourage you to follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, especially TikTok, where you can get all the cool psychological concept illustrations in one place. So thank you so much for, uh, for coming over here. And please, uh, no spoilers on this. Uh, mods are hawking the chat for no spoilers. That includes talking about your opinions of characters, talking about things that may happen later on, giving me any information that I have not yet gathered. This is part three of Red Dead, so we're still pretty early on. I encourage you to just sit back and relax, and interact with chat, and enjoy the ride. It's been a really fun game to play so far. I don't know what Strauss is going to think about the fact that I didn't get money from this guy, but if these people don't have the money, I don't really know what else I'm supposed to do. You know? We'll go talk to him, and then maybe we'll hit the hay for the evening. Uh, Brian, that's gonna be a timeout, man. You can't be you can't be coming into chat saying shit like that, brother. Mr. Strauss! Ah, how did you get on? Not so good. He's almost dead. And they seem more or less destitute. You were a fool for lending them the money. Then, people who aren't desperate don't seem so interested in my propositions. Of course. No shit. Dude, I don't feel bad for Strauss at all. I do not feel bad for him at all. If you're lending to people who are desperate and don't have it, it's that's your fault, dude. That's your fault. Be your own muscle. Are you kidding me? You know, lend a bunch of money to people who can't afford to pay you back. That's your problem. That's your risk you take with your money, Strauss. Ain't got no time for that garbage. We don't prey on the poor around here. I'm going to bed, and I'm going to bed mad. We're going to do what Dutch has got for us after we wake up. Because going to bed mad is okay. That's right. It is okay to go to bed mad. Dutch, my brother, what do you got for me? Arthur. Dutch, Miss O'Shea. Well, feels like we are finally getting back on our feet. 
You, uh, find a buyer for them bonds we stole? Not yet, but Jose is working on it. When we heading west? Soon? I don't know. Feels like things have changed. The whole world's changed. But they don't want folk like us no more. We're being hunted. We are smarter than them. Only the feeblest of men take jobs in the government. <laughs> I hope so. Trust Dutch, Mr. Morgan. You have to. They got Micah! Dutch! Arthur! Uh, What's going on? They got Micah. He, he's been arrested for murder. He was in Strawberry It's okay, and... son. Breathe. <sighs> they nearly lynched me. They, they got Micah and the sheriffs in Strawberry. And there's talk of hanging him. Here's open. Arthur, what? The fool brought this on himself. You know my feelings about him, Dutch. You think I can't see past his bluster to the heart inside? He is a fine man. No, I ain't saving that fool. I can't go. My face will be all over West Elizabeth. I am asking. He would do it for you. I don't think he would, but fine, all right. Arthur. You okay, Lenny? Yeah. Of course I'm okay. You don't seem okay. You take that kid into town. Valentine, not Strawberry. Get him drunk. And Arthur, no crazy business. I've given that up. And you get Micah out of that jail. Come on, son. I'll get to it, Dutch. Just can't drop everything. Okay, I respect Dutch not wanting to go, but like, here's yet another, go do this for me. <laughs> when you're a band of outlaws, uh, the rules are a little different. I mean, I, I get that. I mean, it's just so funny, right? We're a group of people who define ourselves as being bad. Yet we have to find the good in order to save them, right? Like, like Dutch is essentially like, nah, don't hold Micah accountable for how he behaves. Hold him accountable for the heart that's underneath all of it. He's just a passionate guy. Like, it's hard to be collectively bad. <laughs> because if we take what we do for granted and make decisions based off of it, then we fall into the Arthur category where we say like, yeah, his ass should be in jail. He did it to himself. Anything that happens to us, we've done to ourselves, essentially. Like if we, if we continue to be outlaws and we expect to not be treated like outlaws, that's a ridiculous notion. So like, there is an argument to be made here, which Arthur makes. Yeah, he, he screwed himself over. That's not my problem. What are we doing? This is what happens when we define our group this way, Dutch. Oh, by the way, Dutch, thanks for not coming again. I kind of understand it this time, but, like, I really hope that means you're going to be throwing some money in the kitty for the camp. Holy crap. You touch on your opinion on going to bed angry in a relationship. Going to bed mad may be okay, but it can be really hard to do. Are there any tools that can make it just being able to fall asleep easier? Same goes for sad, too. Yeah, so here's the thing. There's this common thing that people say about, like, don't ever go to bed angry. Really, it's just such a dumb idea. It's fine to go to bed angry. You, if you need to sleep in a separate room, if you need to, you know, be on the couch for a night, if your relationship can't sustain... An argument that puts you in separate rooms for one evening so that you can cool off and come back with a leveler head in the morning. You got way more problems going on your, in your relationship than that argument that you're having. It's okay to take a breather. It's okay. Like when people are angry and they're tired, they're not logical. You're not going to problem solve more effectively. And you sure as hell are going to have a harder time validating what's going on for another person. If you need to remove yourself from the situation, cool down, get your head a little bit more level, and sleep separately so that you can actually have, or together while angry, so that you can have a more meaningful and effective conversation later on, do that. I would, I, you know, if you're, if you're in a long-term committed relationship, you better well have the bones in your relationship to better 
to be able to sustain that type of thing. Is it hard to go to bed angry? Yeah. But if you re-engage with that person as a form of like reassurance seeking or avoidance of that tension in yourself, one, you're not building distress tolerance. Two, you're not really engaging in healthy relationship behaviors. Cool downs are a better idea. By the way, have a conversation about that with your significant others while you're not arguing. Like, hey, if we ever get in an argument, it's okay for us to be angry. It's okay if we need to cool off if it means that we're going to come back and have a leveler conversation. But yeah, this idea that you shouldn't go to bed angry is dumb. It just, it, it, it creates more problems because you're only going to get more and more frustrated. And then sometimes what happens is people make concessions just because they want to go to bed instead of actually resolving the issue. That's not good either. Have you watched Bo Burnham's Inside? Yes, I have. Also, thanks for being here, Chad. If you stuck through the zine raid, thank you so much for giving me a shot. As fast as I could. Didn't stop for nothing. Yeah, Let's like go get Mike out of jail, huh? I'm beat. We finally get off that mountain, then this. Mike has got a crazy side off of What were you boys doing? You were supposed to be scouting ahead for us. I kept asking him what we was doing, but he was... You worry too much, kid. Just just some business to attend to, kid. You know how he is. Yes, I do. He was half soaked before we even got there. Then we ran into some fellas. One of them, Micah knew, drank some more. And this is supposed to be a dry town we're in, too. Then he shoots one of them. I know how that goes. Couldn't even tell you quite how. Happened like the strike of a match. The law was on us fast, too. They was ready to strangle me up there and then. But I got away, just about. You're all right now. We'll take care of it. So you're gonna go get him? I'll come with you. No, you leave it to me. For now, let's drink some. Forget about Mike. It was drink that started all this. We'll just have a cup. Settle you down and head back, okay? Okay. Now, yeah. I should warn you. Me and a couple of the other boys, we got in a bit of a fight last time we was here. What kind of fight? Oh, nothing big. No, we kept it clean. We're all good. <laughs> if you say so, Arthur. Well, let's go if we're going. I'm beat. I don't really know why we're going to get drunk. That doesn't really seem like the best idea, if I'm being completely honest. What's up, Chief? It seems like it would be dangerous to bring Lenny back in here. Let's go. Fine, fine. By the way, alcohol as a means to mitigate anxiety is not great. You reinforce that you need to be under the influence in order to calm down. You don't want that. The stress tolerance is the way. If you drink to avoid... Remember, there's two types of getting drunk. There's, the there's people who get drunk so that they can avoid their feelings, and there's people who get drunk so that they can engage with them further. Neither one of those is a good idea. You fixing to come to grief, huh? What you what you reinforce in those in those instances is that the substance itself is what allows you to either avoid or engage with, instead of it being something that's in your control. So it's why, in good faith, I can never advocate for people using substances as a way to manage their emotional experience because it takes away from the power that you have to do that yourself. So us going and taking Lenny to do this is a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Instead of talking about what's going on, like I wouldn't advocate for this. Now we'll see what happens here, but I don't really want to get Lenny wasted here. It's not going to contribute to level headedness. It's going to make us more impulsive. It's going to take away our inhibitions. And I don't know that that's a particularly great thing to have right now, especially when our like minds are not particularly great in the first place. Why do you think Arthur rarely asks for help? Uh, probably pride. And probably learned somewhere down the line that people are not particularly helpful and that he's more reliable to himself than other people are. 
Yeah, Lenny doesn't sound like he's into this. Here we are. Yeah, this didn't go well last time, but come on, Lenny. I'm waiting for the you again. Howdy, folks. Excuse me, partner. Partner? Just one or two, right, Arthur? Of course, just a drink. No big drama. Can we get a couple beers, please? You, I don't want no trouble. You'll get none from me. I was defending myself. Tommy, he's... He'll be fine. Here, have one for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Micah seemed to know a lot of people. That was the problem. How you mean? I mean, I done seen a lot of crazy, crazy I stuff, but Mike... A lot Mikey... of crazy, crazy stuff. Will you shut up? Will you shut up? Be quiet, buddy. <laughs> oh, they're dullards. My lord. You men is dull. <laughs> hey, leave this fool alone. Leave the fool alone. People been leaving me alone for the last ten years. I'm bored with the... Listen, buddy. You're a charming fellow. One of the best. <laughs> but me and the kid here, we're trying to talk business, so could you possibly leave us alone? No offense intended. Ain't no pleasing some folk. Just, just trying to be friendly. <laughs> oh. Okay, that was really great. That was really great. We empathized with that guy's position. We recognized what he was trying to accomplish. We stroked his ego a little bit. And we clearly and firmly set the boundary and explained the purpose of that boundary. That was beautiful. That is boundary setting 101 right there. That was great. And the guy left. Fabulous. It's not easy to do that. You can't you can't curate a reaction from that guy. If you spend a whole bunch of time trying to make sure that that guy responds in a certain way, you're not doing yourself any favors. You focus on how you deliver that message. And Arthur delivered it calmly and firmly. So if you want an example of how to set a boundary, that's how you do it right there. He doesn't owe him any more than that. And if at that point, if that guy doesn't adhere to the boundary at that point, then you either talk to the bartender or, yeah, maybe you, you say, you know, dude, this is going to not turn out well for you if you don't follow through with this. You escalate the consequence. But that was wonderful. We gave that guy an opportunity to adhere to our very clearly stated boundary, and he did. He was not picking up on our subtle cues. So we had to be more direct. That's how you do it. Right there. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. <clears throat> this is not great. No. <laughs> That's great, Martin. Lenny, Lenny, where are you? Camp. Found my friend. You know where we went? Afraid I don't know. Lenny! Lenny! Oh, God. Lenny! 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 You go to the bathroom? Lenny! Hey, Lenny! Lenny? Oh, God. Hey, you see my friend anywhere? Yeah, I can't say, I'm afraid. Oh, 
God, Lenny. Why you gotta do this to me, brother? Okay, okay. I'm good. I am good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, okay. I can do this. I can get in here. Okay. Lenny! that man's coat at are you oh god they all look like Lenny Lenny <laughs> Lenny bastard we can grab him been looking all over for you Lenny, <laughs> Lenny? <laughs> maybe you should switch to water my friend oh god oh man what Ah, Jesus. Lenny. <laughs> there you are, Lenny. I'm Clyde. You got the wrong film. Oh. <laughs> God. Lenny. You come up here again, partner. Come on. This is what they call the red light district. Lenny? <laughs> Found you, Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. Oh, you damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to go in here, Lenny. You turn this light on, Lenny? Lenny, Lenny what are you doing, Lenny? <laughs> Lenny! Oh, Jesus. That wasn't Lenny. Where are you at? Brother, brother where are you at? Jesus. Oh my God, where are you, Lenny?
I don't even feel it, brother. <laughs> you're, a, you're a good friend to me, Arthur. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Not you again. No. No, Arthur, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? No. No, no. I don't want to do this. What the hell's that pig doing? Yo, Mr. Pig, what are you doing? I ain't trying to... Oh, God. No, no. I don't want to drown the man. Oh shit! What? We're just running away, huh? We're not. Uh, it's every man for himself. Oh shit! No! Might be one of the most fun sequences in a game I've ever seen. That was so good. I loved everything about that. Arthur, get it out, brother. A quiet time. Yeah, yeah. That's okie dokie. You can rest by holding E. Your cores will not drain while resting and will refill slightly if they are very low. Yeah, let's have a seat here. Oh, what a night that was. Oh. Were we supposed to accomplish something there? I, I don't even know. How far away are we? Oh my god. Look how far away. Holy shit. Uh, need something that's going to refill my energy bar. All right. I don't know where Lenny is. This is, uh, sir, sir, would you mind giving me a ride back to Valentine? Sir? Sir? Hey, you. Wait. Hey. Hey, hey, hold on. I need a ride to Valentine, brother. If you're going to town, I could use a ride. You got it. Come on up. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it, mister. Out of miss. Let's just enjoy the countryside, eh? Chat, thanks for riding along in this chariot, chariot with me. I appreciate it greatly. 
It has been fine to have all your acquaintance along with me while I do this playthrough. Yeah. Mighty enjoyable. Look forward to this every day. You, uh, you fine folks come here often? I do hope we're going to Valentine. Uh, sir, there is a stranger in need with the O'Driscolls. Oh, shit. Hey, shut up. Get out of here. Act like you never saw this. No, 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 no. Ah. All right. Well, that's why, uh, that's why alcohol doesn't do much for folks. Us getting smashed like that was not great. Don't do this. Don't do what? I'm not robbing you guys. I ain't doing nothing. No, this can't be real. What are we freaking out about here, folks? Are we going to the right place? Oh, lordy, we are not going to the right place. We are going the opposite of the right place. Uh, folks. I guess I didn't specify what town I was going to. This is uh, this is my fault. Uh, I'm thinking it's probably in our best interest to uh, get off at the fork of this road and uh, make our way back. Ooh, you can draw me right here. Thanks for the ride. Thank you. Uh, oh lord, I don't even have my hat. I'm now farther away from home. This was not. The most intelligent of decisions. It's just us in the wilderness chat. Oh, here's a fine man with a with a horse. Sir, I'm gonna need to commandeer this horse. How do you do, sir? Hold up there, mister. Ah, be on your way. Be on your way, sir. Never mind. I don't know, man. I can't bring myself to do it. I mean, who knows what's in that cooler? Maybe he's bringing water back to his family. I, I can't. I can't do it. No horse, no hat, no Lenny. I got no Lenny. Oh, Jesus. We got more folks coming our way. Hello! Howdy, friends. I do declare I had a hellacious evening. I hope that is not the same for you. Howdy, sir. Yep, good to see you. Don't mind me. Just a hung, just a hungover man walking through a river. Nothing to see here. Don't you even worry yourselves at all. Uh, I'm going to just go see what all the fuss over here is all about. Seems to me we might have something going on. I got 167 bullets. We're gonna we'll we'll see what we got here. Starting to wish you got arrested? Ah, nah, 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 nah. I avoided the law. I'm an evasive man. A lot of bugs out here right now. I hear horses. I want to go up there. I want to see what's going on up here. I don't really have a lot of food though. I can't I can't afford this walk. I need like a wild mustang to tame or something.
Ooh, what have we here? Hello, my good man. I just don't understand this at all. Hey, over here. <laughs> I hear that F chord. I get excited. I Hola, amigo. Problem? Problem? No, there's no problem. Quite the contrary. Well, there is a problem for me, but not for you. All right. <laughs> I ain't got time for no, this. Well, no, wait! Give me a minute of your life. I might just change it forever. I'm sure you will have heard of me. Maximo Cristobal Valdespino, the renowned explorer. Can't say I have. There has been much written about me. I once had high tea with the Viceroy of India. I helped liberate South America. I've climbed mountains and swum across seas. I have had many women. I've spent the last three months hunting treasure on the American frontier. Beautiful country. Reminds me a lot of Almeria. But tomorrow I set sail for the island of Shikoku in the Japanese archipelago in search of the legendary Tokushima Sapphire. Huh. Well, good for you. No, no, hold on. You see this map here? It was made by the Jack Hall gang. They robbed banks all the way from here to California. Yeah, I know who the Jack Hall gang are. Oh, them you have heard of, but me? Huh. Well, uh, rumor has it they buried gold somewhere in this area, but were killed before they could retrieve it. They created two maps to ensure it was well hidden. This is the first and should lead you to the second. You just need to follow the landmarks drawn here. Me? Yes. Unfortunately, I am out of time now, but I am prepared to sell it to you for the low price of $10. A trifling investment for a man such as you, given the potential returns. Ten dollars? Ah, uh, what the hell? Why not? I can spare it. very wise investment. I wish you the best of luck. I can spare it. Thank you, sir. I love people like that that are just outrageously grandiose. I just, I love it. Yeah, I'm sure he's probably done none of any of the things that he talked about. Or if he has, like, I don't know. I'm sure you haven't heard of me, but I am the biggest of deals. Okay. I'm sure you are, buddy. But hey, I'll take that map off your hands for 10 bucks. Hey, if for nothing else, I paid 10 bucks for the show. Let's take a look at it. The Jack Hall gang map. Shows a landmark for other clues to help find the treasure. Oh my god, this is... Really? This is what we got? You go up this mountain? Where those two little things are? And it's... Oh my god. Oh my god. This was drawn by my five-year-old daughter. Wish she'd have told me that before I bought it for ten bucks. That, that cartography is ass. Now, I do see some horses here for me to, uh, to wrangle in. We're gonna... I'm gonna maybe take a shot at... Taming a wild Mustang so we can get back to our homestead. Hey, come back. Come here. We can do this. He's just a little nervous. Come here. Come here. I got you. Nice and calm. No, no. Stay here. Hey, stop. Whoa, whoa. Wait. 
stay. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. It's okay. I ain't gonna hurt you. I got you. Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. 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 We're cool. We're cool. Good. Just back off. No! Fuck! No! No! I hit the wrong button! No! No! Son of a bitch! No! 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 All that work! No! 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 Oh! Oh, man! Are you kidding me? I reached for G and I hit F? Oh! No! <laughs> No, oh, okay. All right, come here. No. Wait. Come here. Come here. Hey, wait. I ain't gonna you do know? you like I did your like I, I did your friend. I got that. you. I got you. I got you, friend. Cool. Whoa. 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 Hey. Hey, stop. Come here. Come here. Hey. Hey, I ain't gonna punch you. I ain't gonna punch you. We're cool. We're cool. oh my God. It's okay. Hey, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. They don't call me Horse Punching Arthur anymore. We're cool. We're cool. Oh shit! Jesus! Hey! 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 Wait, where are you going? I ain't giving up that easy, horse. Oh my god. I didn't go to I didn't go to school for uh, horse wrangling earring. Okay. Come on. Come on. I can get it. I can get I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> this is the redemption part of the game, right? Come on. You're all right. I got you. I got you. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. Stay calm. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Oh, Jesus. Hey, now. Easy. Now, we're friends. Oh. All right, we got it. We got it. Settle down, boy. I just tamed a wild horse. You kidding me, chat? Good boy. Yeah. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. All right, we're going to go. I mean, I guess we're going to go here. Wait, who is Jose? Told you that Swanson found something down at the train station by the lake. I where is Lenny though? Like I need to get back to Valentine. Who is with not Reverend Swanson? I mean, he's right there, so I guess maybe we go right there. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. What a what? There's no better cure for a hangover than taming a wild horse. Swanson, you in here? Swanson. All right, we're gonna tie this guy up real quick. Let's go see what Reverend Swanson's got. Uh. 
Good horse. This was a journey. This was a journey. Yes, indeed. Mr. Swanson? You here, Reverend? Sir? Come on. How do you do? What's Gentlemen? Hold up? Your damn hands, sir. Oh, there's poker going on in there. Oh, wait a minute. We going back there. We're gonna go. We're gonna go crash this poker game. Out of fellas. Well, I see an open Mr. seat. Mr. Morgan, I took your advice, sir. I took your advice. Then your god has finally deserted you. What you talking about? I took your advice, sir. I have removed myself from Morpheus's embrace. <laughs> No more shall I sink, sir. I am free. I am free. You don't seem free, friend. You seem drunk. Sit down, Reverend. We ain't finished. You ain't finished. Look at him. He's finished. None of us forced liquor down his throat, friend. I just want him to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points, neither. But seeing, I do just fine. You want to step outside or do a business here? I just want him to finish the game. Why can't we all just get along? These are good men, Arthur. They're children of God. They are children of God. Oh. Well, how's about you playing this place, huh? That seems fair. Fair? Sure. You want a game? Let's do it. Sure. I'll play a few hands. Let's do it. Let's well, get that money. Sit yourself down then. Let's get that money, chat. While the Reverend crawls away. I'm Luther. This is Marvin. Hope y'all don't cheat. Fortunate for you both, we're being gentlemen about this. Same goes for you. So Queen Ten? I'll you take two Queen know Ten. Each other anyway. Don't seem like the likeliest of friends. If you don't mind me saying. We go a long way back. And now you're his chaperone. I guess it's something yeah, like that. that. Can we play? Check. See if these guys talk. He can't be no real clergyman. <laughs> he committed about five cardinal sins just in that Hey, we paired our queen. I think he used to be. All right, good, good, good. Paired a queen. Drifted a little in recent years. I'm going to go. I don't want to let on. Challenge to all of us. I'll check. Let's see what these Can you imagine got. him at the pulpit? If he could stand up. On the fourth day, he, he turned water he into whiskey, and I don't remember much after that. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I don't like that. I'm going to bet it because I want to see if they call, see if maybe that shows that they have an ace. Disrespect him again, and you'll find yourself in a bad time, too. All right, all right. Just trying to have a little fun here. All right, he called. It is a game after all, mister. All right, so I got two calls. Oh, he hits the two pair. Let's go. We got no, wait, do we have a flush on the board? No. 30 cents in the pot. They bet on the ace. There's no way, I don't know. Unless one of them has ace 10 or ace queen, we've got this. I'm going to go in. Let's go Hurry 20 up, cents. Uh, how about that? Look at his face. He's bluffing. Oh, he called. They both called? There. Pile of crap. Don't laugh. Yes, come on. Ah, well. <laughs> hey. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, fellas. All right, one of five poker hands won. All right, we'll do another one. Now, this is supposed to be amusement. Ooh, give me queen. Oh, man. All right. King, queen suited? Uh, we will absolutely call. Gonna start small here. Is that it? Oh, we raised. Yeah, I'll, I'll call um, that. For sure. Come on, give me hearts. Oh, that sucks. If one of them's holding an ace, 
I think we got to bluff this out a little bit here. So we're going to go 10 cents. Make one of them think I either got an ace. We did get a heart there. If we get another heart. That's going to be huge. We're on a gut shot flush draw. I'm going to play slow. Okay, then. 10 cents. He calls. We, are you raised 10? No, we're just sitting on an ace. I'll take it. I also got a straight draw. Seven's dead. No. Garbage. Uh. Here. You gonna call me at ten delayed. cents, or you gonna fold? Let's start this low for now. All right. So he's maybe slow playing this. Oh, so he, so he check raised. I just don't see how this guy has an ace. I'll call it. Nah. All right, so there's no possible flush on the board, so I can't I can't bluff a flush. The only bluff I have here at this point in your own time. I've got nothing. I got nothing. I don't even know how I bluff this. Unless I cuz I can't even play that I have a straight cuz we got there's no no straight draw on the uh, ba 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 ba. We'll check. Uh, check. How do you like this? He's gonna bet. Oh, no, he it's, plays. Uh, ha! Pretty pathetic. He had a pair. Shit. I can't believe he won on a pair of sixes. Are you kidding me? Nice. I'm surprised he didn't bet that out. No. Hard lines, partner. Do us both a favor. Shut up. We didn't have anything there. I mean, I went a little bit aggressive the there, but... Of me. All right, six, six king. Nah. Call. All right, so he folds, he calls. I'll check, because I'm on the... I'll check. I'm on the big blind. Jack, two, four. Gotta start small here. Oh, come on. This ain't kid poker. With the... Gut shot flush draw. I'll play it four cents. Huh. Oh shit. Alright, I get a five, I got a straight. I'll call four cents. Absolutely. If I get a king on if I get a king on the river, or if I get a five, I take the hand. Come on, king or a five. Garbage. I got nothing. He checked. Yeah, I'll check it out too. Give me king high. All right, what do we got? No way! Mm. Can't believe this shit. Wow. Ah, better than nothing. Wow. He won on the kicker. We gotta get. We gotta get this guy's money. Damn it! I can't get. I need this guy's money. It's Come on, right give me another on. hand. Let's go. Deal it out, wish fellas. I got your friend to bless my hand before he passed out. I wish I'd asked that drunken fool to bless my card. Seven three off down. suit. If I mean I'm on the small blind, so I'll take it. But like, yep. If he raises, I'm out. All right, I'll call. All right, I'm gonna call two cents. This guy raises, I I'm check. out. All right, so he checks. So give me. Uh... Come on, give me something lucky. Garbage. Garbage. We're checking around. No, I'm out if any of them Not bet. For me. You should just go play checkers the amount you check. Yep, I'm out. Later, fellas. Garbage. So in mm. poker, when you have the uh when you have the initial round that goes out where everybody gets their card skog, in order to encourage betting, one person has to bet a minimum amount. It's called the big you blind. In this up, case, fellas? it's I think You're it's four cents. Lucky there. And then the person next to him bets half of that, which is two cents. And it's to encourage it's those folks to bet around. Fun. So in this case, the guy who's two positions away from the dealer is going to be the big <clears throat> blind. And the person who's the, the one position away is going to be the small blind. And it gives it means they have buy-in there. So 
because I am now the dealer here, I have to decide if I want to put four cents in here to call the minimum bet, which is four cents in order to play. So we don't flip immediately. Sometimes so I'm going to pay four cents, and then the nice. next guy is going to decide whether he's, it's worth two cents to stay in. And if, that, if I bet four and that guy bets two, the other guy's either in for free or he can raise and put more money in the pot if he wants to get us out or if he wants to show that he's got something. Okay. So I'm going to call with an, with an 810 yeah. suited. Because I feel pretty good about that as a starting hand. Now he just raised. So off the big blind, he just raised 10 cents. So he's either saying, I want you all out or I've got a better hand. I'm going to call 10 cents on an 810. Yeah. He called two. So now let's see. Hopefully we get something good on the flop here. And we get absolute fucking garbanzo beans. That is let's that is awful. He bet. Yep, we're out. Nope. This is annoying. Isn't good. Ah. Isn't good. Better than nothing. Dude, this guy is raking in the cash. What the hell is this? Maybe you should quit while you're behind. <laughs> Wish he'd left some booze for us. I'm parched. All right, Jack Six suited. Not great, but hmm. honestly, I'll take it. Gonna start small here. Is that it? So he's man. This guy's raising on the like. Come on, give me a jack. All right, so I paired the six, which is the highest pair on the board. So unless he's got a pair in his hand, we're in a good position. So he he raised off the... He raised initially, so I'm going to see if I can call him on this. I'm going to throw 10 cents in because I've got high take? pair. And... Uh, Let's see. Let's I see if he comes in on it. That's gonna tell me that he probably yeah. has a pair. If he does, okay. So he might have a pair in his hand because he just re-raised. And I don't have a. Oh man. He threw thirty-two cents on that. He's either sitting on in a straight or a straight draw or a pocket pair. And I don't know that a pair of sixes here is enough for me to go in on this. I don't feel strong about it. We're going to pull it out. Bridget. Ah. All right, then. Hmm. I'll take it. He does have the money to bluff with, but that's just that's not strong enough of a hand for me to go in on here. Ah, that's it's important sweet. to watch for patterns and mannerisms with this. Me, huh? This guy stays relatively chill. Four three? Are you kidding me? Let's start this low for now. No, no, no. I gotta call twelve cents. No, I'd better I'm out on that fold. hand. You just gonna fold I'll every call. time? Yeah, I'm gonna fold that. Why would I go in on three four off suit? No way, man. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this hand. I got no interest in this hand. Impressive. It all counts, huh? Especially with that board. They go sitting on a pair of eights. Should have seen that coming. Uh, All right, we're going to do a couple more hands, chat. A couple more hands, and then we'll keep going. I'm a sucker for poker. I must say, you have a lot less stories than your friend did. Come on, give me... Hey, there we go. Give me an ace-king. Yep, uh, I'll call. Uh... I could have maybe Wait. gone all in there. All right, so he just checked. Give me a pair. I got the queen. No. I'm gonna bet six cents. Let's see if he's got yeah, anything. Yeah, I know. Pretty pathetic. Oh come nah. on, this ain't. Pulled it out. Okay. There we go. All right, okay. I'll take it. There we go. I'll take it. Sixteen cents, not much. All right, let's turn this around. I'll give you that one. I mean, the guy on the right is pretty smart. This has been quite the eventful day. 
just not the same without a slurring clergyman, is it? <laughs> I mean, we can get him back in here, fellas. You feel like that's what we need? King nine? I'll take a king nine. Call. Especially if I'm sitting on the big line. Start small here. He's gonna raise, isn't he? Yep. I'll call that call. with a king nine. Yep. Oh, he's going in too. Okay. Okay, then. Boy, A6-7 with a gut shot flush draw. I don't know that that's enough for me to... Man, this guy's smart. This guy knows that I'm in a terrible position. I can't... I mean, I got an ace on the board. There's a good chance one of them might have an ace on the board. I can't really... I don't know that 20 cents is worth me waiting for two more spades. Some time before we all grow old will yeah, be I'm nice. Out. Oh, no, shit. I'm old. I'm out. Come on. At least make it interesting. Next hand. Okay. I really need some better cards. <whistles> better than nothing. Man, I just don't. I don't have the. I don't have the position of leverage here. If I get a good hand here, we're gonna we're gonna go all in, and we're just gonna we're gonna take our losses if we can't. The people we've met at this table, huh, Marvin? All right, what do you got for me? King three, offsuit. I'm in the small blind. Hmm. He calls. All right, yep, I'll call that. Check. Good, all right. Give me the flop. All right. We have a nine. Boy, that's garbage. Let's see if I can, uh, I'll throw four cents, yeah, see man. if they got anything. If any of them hit a pair. Is that it? You just raise? No? Okay. All right, so we have a five, eight, and a seven on the board. Oh, shit. All right, so I'm sitting on a straight draw now, because if I get a, if I get a six, I got a straight. Boy, is 10 cents worth going in for a straight? Let's I know. go. It ain't too exciting. Sure. He calls. Yeah. He calls. Oh, he raised. All right, chat. We're going all in. Give me a six on the river. I'm going to go. Give me a six on the river or get him out. You're bluffing. He's in. Uh -oh. Six on the river, chat. Give me good energy. Give me good vibes. Oh, he hit a king. Oh, my God. I hit a king. And another check. It's not as great, but they're going to have a side pot. Well, look. I hit the king on the river. Let's see, then. Who? Sneak that one. I'll take it. Pair of fives. Pair of fives. I had the king. That's the side pot, right? There you go. Could have been worse. Uh, come to me. Let's go! Let's go! It's the king on the river, baby! Damn it. Hard lines, partner. <laughs> Holy shit. I want to clean this dude out. You're going to have fun getting him home. I wish I'd asked that drunken fool to bless my card before he passed out. All right, another king nine? This time suited? Yeah, absolutely. I will, uh... No, you know what? I just did. Uh, let's late. let's raise. Let's raise. Okay, then. You call? All right, good. We re-raised. I'll call that. Huh. You're trying strong arm me. Let's go. Now he he probably has something because he's only got sixty eight cents left. Come on, give me a king. Oh. We did get a diamond though. That's big. Okay, so he checked. Uh, I'm actually gonna check out here because my sense is that if I if I uh, if I bet he's probably gonna re-raise and I don't have enough to go on that so we're gonna check and we're gonna get our next card out. Give me a diamond. Oh, that two's dead. No. You're gonna check again. I'll check as well. Come on, give me something. Check. Oh check. man. Yep, I'll check too. I I got garbanzos. 
What do you got, How brother? About that? That's all I got. He's got Don't a pair of fours. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, no way. Hmm. All right. Not great. Not great. I want this guy out. I want to knock this guy off the table, man. He just got a lot of money back, though. Marvin's Mr. Moneybags over here. Yeah, spade made me nervous, too. I mean, I don't know that it was likely he was sitting on two spades, but... 6'10 off suit. Sitting in the big blind. No, not for me. He's out. I'll check. You're real I'll play. Exciting. Real exciting. Come on, give me something. Oh my god. Two jacks and a queen? Let's see if I can steal the pot here. I'ma play slow. Jesus, you play like my grandmother. Oh shit. Alright, he called, so he he has to have paired one of them. I hit a three. No, that's garbage. We'll check out. But he's an idiot there. He should he should have absolutely bet that. He knows I'm out if he bets that. And a king? Good lord, I got nothing. Yeah. I'll uh, check. Not for me. That's it. Read him and weep. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, garbage. Yeah, hmm, pair of fours. All counts. Huh? Getting some rough hands here. He's not the guy I want to have it. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, sitting through the competitive poker as uh, moments of the stream. I hope you all are enjoying this. This has been quite the I am. Day. This is the kind of stuff that gets you sidetracked for hours, isn't it? Come on, baby. <clears throat> all right, queen three. We'll take it. I just want to knock one of them out. Okay, so I'll call the two cents. I check. Give me a good flop. Ace, seven, three. I pair the three. All right, fellas, let's see if you got, uh, yeah, no. let's see what you got rolling here. Throw oh, the 10 come cents. on, this ain't kid poker. He calls. Here. He's got the money to play. He calls. He re-raises. I bet you one of them sitting on an ace. I'll play one more. I'll call. Well, he's in two. The ten with a spade is scary. I don't... Ah, boy. All right, let's check out. Let's see what he does. He checks. You should just go play checkers the amount yeah, you check. Okay, so he's going to strong... 92 cents? No, sir. I'm out. Ah. Uh. Uh, it's basically all in for him. Wow. That was a really smart nice. bet. Now, my guess is he, he could have been bluffing there. No, no. And it would have been a smart That's bluff on his part given the way that just we were be betting quiet. that, but I just I couldn't I couldn't do that. Couldn't bring myself. Now we're in the we're in the low position again here. Come on, you got this. Nine three? Nah. 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 I'm not even Come gonna on. I'm not even gonna pay to see the card. No way. I'll take it. No way. See that's the nice thing about not having the blind there. At least I got garbage clubs when I could fold out. This is the or garbage of the uh, card. Not your day, is it? Wish I'd got your friend to bless my hand before he passed out. The people we've met at this table, huh, Marvin? Eight, seven off. He fold. Huh. You gonna raise? All right, I'll check. Check a thing. Give me a flop. I'm going heads up against this guy. We pair the eight. I'm a bet. Come on in, brother. I know. It ain't too yeah. sudden. Come on in. Ten mm. cents. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that, Jack. 
Come on, 20 cents. Let's go. Shit. Yeah! There we go. All right. Yeah. I'll take that. Okay. Yeah. Sitting on that eight like that. This is a good cure for a hangover. Uh, finally. Are you kidding me? The way you play that eight, because... Especially with that jack coming out, I had to hold him accountable to that jack. Ace five. Let's see how they bet this. Let's start this low for now. All right, so he raised. I will... I'm going to re-raise that to 24. Right. Let's see if that knocks Somebody this guy out. Big boy oh, he comes in. Morning. Okay, so he's got okay, something. Then. He re-raises. You're bluffing. Fuck it, let's go. It a mile off. I'll do it. I'll ride this ace. Let's go, fellas. Come on, give me an ace. Give me an ace on the flop. Give me an ace on the flop. Ooh, you give me the 3-2, though. Oh, man, I need a 4. I need a four. I reckon I'll go all in. Let's go, chat. Um, Let's go, chat. Huh. Give me the energy. We need the straight. Give me the straight or the paired ace. Let's go. Mm, no, I need a four. I need a four. All in. Give me the four. He's all in, too? Oh, my God. Okay. Here you go. How do you like this? No mm. way. Uh-oh. Sorry, friend. Ah, crap. Oh. <laughs> oh, hell. Ah. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is getting too rich for me. Oh, sit down. Oh, I'm done, friend. It's been a real education. Come on, Rip. Where is he? Where'd he go? Who? The Reverend, where it? We've been playing poker for like 30 minutes, Arthur. Excuse me, gentlemen. Reverend! Reverend Swanson! Where'd you go? Yeah, we were just betting with the Reverend's money, weren't we? All right, let's find the Reverend. Sir. Uh, let's go hop on the horse. Hey, my horse is back. Oh, Reverend. Yeah. Get your hands off him. What the hell are you doing? Say a word. You'll keep. You stay out of it. Get your hands off him now, you son of a bitch. What the hell is your problem? He's with me. Oh, good. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn fools! Oh, dude, this guy knows. This guy can fight. Oh my god! You're going down! Holy shit! Okay. Oh. I'll kill you both. Oh. Oh, shit. No, sir, you ain't. No, sir, you ain't. Get your ass. Get back here. Nope. Come on. I got my rope. Let's go. Get your ass back here, brother. What you saw back there? You're a dead man. You understand me? Yep. I I won't tell us so. I promise. Good. Get the hell out of here. Better not. Reverend? Reverend! Get off the damn tracks! What the hell are you doing? Reverend! Reverend, stop! 
What is going on? What are you doing? Jesus. Come on. I need my horse. Come on, a friend. It's just a simple mistake. Horse. You can still be saved. Horse. Come on. Dude, what is up with these people running away? Reverend, what are you doing? This has not been a good day. This, is, this has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Come on, Reverend. What are you doing, sir? This is not safe. There is a train coming, sir. You done it your foot. It appears to like this place and wants to stay. No way. You... What are you? No. Get your foot out of here. Twist your leg, you drunken bastard. Oh, my God. Come on. Oh, shit. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, no, you don't. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? Throwing me off a bridge like there that? There was your goddamn train, you crazy bastard! <sighs> Have I been bad again, Mr. Morgan? I'm sorry. Uh, I wish I was different. <laughs> Let's get you home. Home? Yeah. That's a wonderful idea. I could have tea with Margaret. Margaret? Who's Margaret? What? I wish I was different. It's such a convenient way of trying to justify the actions that you take. When you view your behaviors as inevitable, as out of your control, as linked to your personality. No good. That is a convenient excuse to enable yourself to continue doing what you're doing. Your behaviors are a choice. He chose to get drunk. He chose to run out onto the railroad tracks. He chose to do all this stuff. When he says, I wish I was different, he's using that as an excuse for these behaviors instead of looking at his own accountability. And all of us could do well to learn from that. When people box themselves in and say, like, I had to do it, this is how I am, what they're doing is they're avoiding the accountability they have for the actions they take. The reason we look at behavior as a choice is because it empowers people to make better choices. If this guy wants to be different, he needs to choose different behaviors. And that's something that's absolutely within his power to do. It's not an inevitability that he acts this way. It's a choice. Damn it. Oh, sorry, sir. You gonna be all right, Reverend? Yep. Let's get you home. A flush of diamonds. Good night, Scott. Okay, so the Reverend, you know, I always enjoy the juxtaposition of the Reverend who doesn't act in accordance to our expectations. You know, we expect him to be a clean-cut man, a man of moral, a man of decency, and we see him playing poker in the back of a train station and wasted off his ass. And this is obviously not the first time we've seen him this way. Now, do we 
do we judge this man based on our expectations that we have of what a reverend supposedly is? Or do we accommodate and create a different expectation of what reverends are capable of? Do we expand our representation internally of people of the Lord to allow them to engage in things like poker and drink? Like, we all have to ask ourselves this. Because there's two camps here. We could judge the shit out of this guy and be like, man, this guy ain't no reverend. What a piece of shit. Why would you be a man of God if you're gonna do all this if we're gonna do all this dumb stuff? And at the same time, you can look at it and go, you know what? Maybe this guy's progressive. Maybe this guy is like, you know what? We don't have to be confined to celibacy and sobriety and all this stuff in order to be people of the Lord. Right? I can still be spiritual, I can still be religious, I can still appreciate all that comes along with that and engage in my vices. He doesn't have to be puritanical. He can, he can in indulge. So it's a very interesting proposition for all of us with the reverend here. Do we box ourselves into our prior expectations of what a reverend is supposed to be, or do we expand it out and say, you know what, maybe this guy's not so bad, he's just different from what we expect. I don't know that either one is better or worse than the other, but I do like the opportunity to engage in some level of curiosity and, pretend, and potentially expand our idea of this and, and reserve our judgment until we know more about it. Hey, man. Hey, shot it back there. Bring the Reverend back. Drop Reverend Swanson off in his bed. I was wondering when he'd show up. You all right? Now, Molly is interesting. Wish I felt the same. Because the O'Driscolls are Irish and Molly is Irish. I wonder if she's a former O'Driscoll. I unfortunately did not, Annabella. I lost I lost the house. Well, I lost the Reverend's money. I didn't really lose my money. I just lost him. I was playing with his money. We don't have Lenny yet. I gotta go get Lenny, man. Ooh. You better sleep your way to salvation, my friend. Oh, what happened? Just the usual. Poor oh. bastard. Exactly. Well, thank you, Mr. Morgan. I'll keep an eye on him. He was lucky this time. Real lucky. He was indeed. Hello, Arthur. So, we found the O'Driscoll's hideout, but no sign of comb. Well, so long as we're hitting them before they hit us. Oh, and that Karen? He's all right now. All right, well, I should be getting on. Okay, Arthur. All right. Go to bed, Reverend. What a delightful surprise. Hello, Karen. Oh, good sir. Hello, Miss Grimshaw. Hey. How is your meal? Fine. I'm so glad. Hope you're behaving yourself. No. Of course I am. To stay out you know, of trouble. All right then. Stuck up that mountain. I thought long and hard about if we'd have to eat you. Very amusing. Hello, ladies. How are you on this I fine evening? Roasted you alive, but Mr. Pearson was keener on chopping you up and turning you into stew. Said he couldn't bear to see your face for even one moment longer than he had to. You're quite the amusing companion, aren't you? I like to think so. Hello, Karen. I'll be going now, I guess. Um. Hey, I'm Morgan. Make sure you stay close.
Who's this? Susan Grimshaw. Oh, that's her back in the day. Okay. Hi there, Arthur. Hey, Abigail. Working hard there. Somebody's got to do it. All right, well, don't let me disturb you. Okay. All right, what's in this medicine truck? This seems like this is a... Like, I have this little, like, alert here. But I don't know... Arthur. Mr. Pearson. Don't you ever get fed up with all this? Sometimes, I suppose. Well, know you're appreciated around here. Sure, well, as you were. Hey, that was nice to say to him. All right, so we got to go we got to go get Lenny. Lenny and Micah Let's go have a rest and let's wake up in the morning and let's go down to Valentine and let's go see what our boys are up to. Get a nice 11 hour sleep. We'll eat something in the morning and then we'll go uh we'll go to Valentine and see what's going on. Or is Lenny at the camp? Did I miss him? You deserve a lot more subscribers. Oh, thank you, Seabass. We're working toward it. I appreciate that, though. Wait a minute. How do I? I want to get some food. There we go. Pour some coffee. Ooh, pour some coffee. Okay, so Lenny's here, so we don't got to worry about Lenny. All right. Morning, Arthur. Eat me some stew for breakfast. Oh, yeah. And we just throw the rest of it on the ground because we're wasteful as shit. All right, Miss Grimshaw. Hi there. Hi there. Morning, to You, you okay? I know you like a good cup of coffee. Nothing better. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. Take care, Arthur. All right, where are we, uh, so we could go, I guess we go hunting, or we got, well, we got a lot, uh, money over here. I mean, are we, is it worth maybe taking a trip over? I guess maybe I do the hunt. All right, let's go. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning. Hi, Taylor. Where's Lenny? I want to talk to Lenny. Okay there, Dutch. Yeah. When are you going to meet Trelawney and the others? If there's a chance to get to Sean. I know, I know. I'm on it, I promise. I began to tumble and roar. What are you doing, Reverend? A face is red like a lobster. I fell and broke my poor knobster. My watch from my fob was picked, sir. I never get drunk anymore. Oh. Wait, there's more. Uh, I'm resolved to try it. I live on a moderate diet. Hold a drink, but I'll deny it. 
and I shun the alehouse door. For that is where they tell us he meet all the jolly good fellas. And I by the poker and bellus. I'll never get drunk anymore. There he is. The Lord blesses us this morning. A drink in your hand. What a surprise. Just a swift one? Well, it's your life, not mine. Yep, I'm right here. Alcoholism's pretty nasty. Like, I know we can kind of look at this and we laugh about it because he's singing songs and he's having a good old time. We go, ha, 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 ha. But alcoholism destroys people's lives, man. It's not as easy as just stop drinking. If it was, we wouldn't have rehab programs. We wouldn't have things like alcohol and Alcoholics Anonymous or Al-Anon. Alcoholism is pretty serious. There's all sorts of reasons why people start using it as much as they do and develop alcoholism there are genetic links to alcoholism there are people who have that predisposition but one of the ways that we're taught to look at it as uh, relationship therapists is that what really happens is that a person develops a relationship to alcohol that it becomes another member of their family or another thing or person in their life and that relationship starts to become more important than others, in part because of how reliable it is. As humans, we seek reliability and consistency. We want that. It's safe. And the reverend here probably finds a significant amount of consistency and reliability in alcohol, as many other people do. And that consistency and reliability and expectation that gets met consistently, because you know what happens when you drink, can be more powerful than the unpredictable relationships, like real relationships in your life. And so people turn to that. In times of distress, you go to your attachment figures. If your attachment's to alcohol, you're going to go there. So this guy's hurting. He's in pain. He's struggling. And he's turning to alcohol. Not because he's some piece of shit, but because that's the most reliable relationship he has in his life. And it's tragic. And it destroys people. It really does. So as funny as this moment is with him, it's also pretty sad. He's probably destroyed a lot of relationships in his life because of it. Alcoholism runs in my own family. In fact, I have a propensity for it. It's something I never imagined would be the case until um, there was a certain period in my life where all of a sudden I noticed that it was happening and I was making really dumb decisions. And I was like, holy shit, it's in me. It's a scary thing to realize. You were talking about choices and behaviors earlier. How does addiction factor into it? Maybe Swanson feels powerless to change because of his need for alcohol. Yes, no, I, I mean, I think that relies, or that applies very much to what we're talking about here, Fick, that like, if in an uncontrollable world, alcohol is something he can control. The ritual of even pouring it into his body is something that he can control. You know, the, the whole paradox of the thing, though, is that alcohol also takes you out of control. You start to lose control of your motor functions. And so now you, the thing you're using to try to control an uncontrollable world actually makes you uncontrollable and it all perpetuates itself. It's really nasty. But if, alcohol is so, if alcoholism is something that affects you or your family, there is help out there. You are not responsible for the alcohol use of the people in your life that you love. The best you can do is support them and set your own boundaries, protect yourself, encourage them to get help, show them what help is available, but you cannot force a person to stop drinking. They've got to want it, and they've got to access the help that's out there. But it takes a very specific uh, treatment plan and help in order to get people through things like addiction or alcoholism. It's not as easy as stop drinking. It's really... And so all sobriety, whether for an hour or whether for six years, whether for 25 years, is all to be celebrated because it's not an easy thing to maintain. So, 
I just want to make that point after talking to him because it's very easy for us to laugh about that. But that is a really... Um, that is a very... Hur uh, that, that man is hurting. That's what I'm trying to say. That man right there is hurting a lot. And he's doing the best he can. But it, the best he can is destructive. Hey, Pearson. Fire's good and hot, Mr. Morgan. All right. Let's take a look at... Um... Black Bell. Maybell Elizabeth Coulter, the grand dame of the gunslingers, the dynamite do wager. Married six times to six gentlemen, gamblers, robbers, outlaws, everyone. Never divorced, dresses in her widow's weeds. Sole remaining survivor of the Coulter Tobin gang. Outlawed after robbery and roads. Private contract for her life or liberty. Large reward. Last reported sighting near Blue Water Marsh. Do not approach too dangerous for mere biographer. How far away is that? That's got to be pretty far away, I imagine. Yeah, she's way away. Well, let's check the other ones. Let's at least get their location on the map here. First you take a drink, then your drink takes a drink, and then the drink takes you. Yeah, DL. That's a, a hell of a quote. Okay. Billy Midnight's last location is now on the map. Blacko Hernandez. Unlikely conversationalist proceed with caution. At present keeper of hogs near Flat Iron Lake. Okay, so we got... Let's see where all these guys are. I'm not opposed to hunting. I just... Hunting doesn't excite me as much, but I think maybe that's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll knock it... Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This dude's close. Emmett Granger. All right, let's let's hunt. I, I, I let's go. Let's go. Let's knock this out with Charles. Nobody's irredeemable. But there is a point of alcoholism or other addictions that therapeutic intervention won't help, even if willing. Nah, uh, I'm sure there's probably cases of that, Chelbs. But if a person's really wanting to work their ass off at it and get it done, I think there's just varying degrees of commitment that's required in order to get people through something like that. Hey, Arthur. Next Saturday, it's homecoming. I'm really nervous to talk to this one girl that's going to be there because we've held out. We've had our issues, and I want to resolve so I can move. From... Uh, I assume Lord it's the second Arthur. part, Frank. You okay? Let's talk to Jose. Let's see what he's got. Jose? You want to go hunting? What are you hunting? An elephant? <laughs> I wish. No. I saw a huge bear. One of the biggest I ever saw. I reckon nearly a thousand pounds. My God. But you need me to come with you. Of course. Let's go. Where are we heading exactly? Up near the Dakota River. Might take a day or two. I could do with a break from this place. Oh, me too. It's been a rough couple of weeks. You need anything? I don't think so. I got all I need. Let's go then. I forgot my hat. So you still ain't replaced Bodicea? Nah, I miss her. She was quite a horse. This one's okay, but... Ain't no boat to see. I've been meaning to offload this big shire horse for a while now. Unruly bastard. Where'd you get him? Some big loudmouth bastard tried to rob me and was out riding, so I... Well, you know how it is. I see. Let's take him to Valentine. It's on the way, sort of. There's a decent dealer there. We'll unload him. You could buy yourself a new horse. Put your saddle on him. Let's get going. Okay. But I do kind of like this horse. 
There's nothing wrong with two horses. And the stables always have the best ones. Well, I guess you're right. This is gonna be fun, Arthur. You won't throw me? No, he's an angel. If I'm near him. Nasty little look in his eyes. Oh, don't be rude about this magnificent creature. Guess what I'm trying to ask is how do I present myself confidently even with this emotional baggage? Uh ask yourself what would confidence look like? And then ask yourself what the behaviors are associated with that and choose those behaviors. The thing is, like confidence is not directly tied to baggage or like past or anything like that. Like confidence is like what would confidence look like you first have to define what that looks like what would a confident confident person appear to do or say in these moments and then start practicing those things i don't know if anybody can ever truly be redeemed from the horrible actions due to alcoholism well i think we can redeem people while still holding them accountable like i don't I, as we talked about back in detroit i hate the idea that people are irredeemable it's okay if people want to have boundaries with a person or not associate with a person because of what they did. I'm not suggesting that people have to invite a person back into their life after they've been hurt by them. But I don't like the idea that we write people off as irredeemable because if we do that, it starts a really slippery slope of like, you know, at what point do we stop trying to help? It would, you know, it just, that gets really gross for me. So I, th I think I understand what you're saying, T-Sipper. I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just, I, I don't like to look at people as irredeemable. I think it's unfair to everybody to do that. Okay, see if you can get your leg over that brute. Uh, I would say if you know for sure, Shelves, that you're going to work on alcoholism, you should definitely start with like a CADC or somebody who specializes in alcohol addiction. If you know that's the central part of what you're trying to talk through. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. We're heading out. Might be gone a couple of days. They got a good range of horse tack at the Valentine stables. Some beautiful saddles. I used to have a real nice one. Yeah, what happened to that? Got stolen outside that saloon in Deer Creek. Ah, oh, I remember now. Just about. <laughs> that turned into a long day. Yes. Remember? Mac went crazy. Threatened to kill the whole town. <laughs> and Davy was passed out so cold we left him there came back in the next day and he woke up started right back drinking again <laughs> uh, I miss those boys Jenny too she had some spot that girl it must be pretty hard on Lenny you could tell he was sweet on her well Lenny and Jenny could never have worked that's like Arthur and Martha or Bill and Phil <laughs> Yeah, maybe you're right. Does feel a bit like our luck died with them, too. Nonsense. We'll be all right. Just need some money to get back on our feet. I hope so. You find a way to offload those Cornwall bonds yet? Not yet. They're still very hot. Need to be done right. I have a couple of leads I'm looking into. I can respect that. <laughs> Don't also, those of you going to bed, good night. You there, hey, he's all right. Yeah, okay, boy. There, boy. Stables are just up ahead. Welcome. All right. Go sell that big brute. And buy yourself a horse. Okay. I'm going off to the general store. Get a few things to lure that bear out with. <laughs> Meet you back here in a bit. Sweet. Hey, how can I help you? I'm in the market for a new horse. Something strong and fast. Yeah, well, you're in the right place. I got some beauties in at the moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about this one here? Yeah, you looking to sell? I show sure, you. Yeah. You got papers? No, no papers. Well, of course, that's going to affect what I can pay. But your luck's in. I got a fella who's been looking for a decent workhorse like this for a while. He'll pay a good price. 
Otherwise, I can always stable them here for you. Here, take a look. Sell or stable the horse. Um, what's he sell for? Sixty-five bucks. Yeah, I like my other horse. I'll sell him. American Standard Bread, Dutch Warm Blood. Dude, this Amer racehorse standard. Dude, this thing is awesome. I need nine bucks to be able to buy the American Standard. Ooh, baby. I don't want to buy it. Do I have to buy a new horse? Looks like I have to. Oh, got a name. Steve. You know what? I would like to change my perspective on that. Wait, wait. One more question. Me and this girl I have passed very complicated, but how do you suggest we move on from the past and try for a better future? Ah, uh, Frank, I can't answer that for you. I don't know anything about your relationship to be able to give you a good idea on that one, friend. I wish I could, but like, I, I would need to know you and that other person in the relationship and all of the stuff that you're talking about in order to be able to help you with that. The best thing I can tell you is communicate openly and directly with each other as best you can. Focus on what you can control. And if there are boundaries there that get set, listen to those boundaries. If, if she sets boundaries with you, you got to follow them. But communication, so that's, where it, that's where it all starts. How could things ever get better if everybody holds on to their grudges? No, I would agree. Um, it's, I mean, I think it's okay to hold people accountable in the long term, but also we need to allow people to grow and evolve. Equipment, saddles. Ooh, boy. I kind of like this one. Oh, and I can even make it whatever color I want. 42 dollars for the normal one. Improve. Look at that. No, I don't even know that this is I don't even know if this is the horse that I want. But I guess I have to Do I have to buy this? Right, partner you got yourself a deal and a fine new horse i hope so well i don't sell anything other than good animals you have my word on that here are your papers and on me a new grooming brush and some treats <laughs> appreciate it all right, you. You treat this fella well. I know he's gonna look after you just fine. Cool. Choice. How much did you pay for that thing? Not that much. Okay, well, with some good care, you should be able to make something of it. Steve right, the horse. Let's get going. We got quite a ride ahead of us. Lead the way. So, what's this lake we're heading for? It's called O'Cray's Run, up in the mountains east of Cumberland Falls. I just hope I can remember how to get there. Back into the mountains? I sure didn't figure on that. But this time, we're doing the chasing. So, how are things with you and John? Fine. Ain't it about time you let it go now it was a year Jose. he ditched us for a goddamn year i've spoken to him many times 
He knows he did wrong. That's triangulation right there, chat. What Jose is doing right there is self-triangulating. He is pushing himself into our business. What goes on between me and, and John is between me and John. If you are affected by it in a certain way and it affects my relationship to you, Hosea, then let's talk about that. But I don't need you button into how I handle my business with John Marston. This is a great example of what not to do, friends. Hosea has no right to do this. He, or, or, I mean, he can certainly do it, but it doesn't look well on him. Self-triangulation is no bueno. Let me deal with what's going on with John. It's okay to ask how I'm doing with it, but don't tell me what to do. Tell me how it affects you. If it makes it awkward for you to engage with me because of what's going on, then let's figure that out. Let's problem solve that. But don't be telling me what to do with John. Avoid this. Don't get yourself stuck in other people's business like this, chat. I didn't ask for it. And even if I did, that's kind of a problem. And then, it, again, this, this triangulation is no good. I don't like that. He just wants to put it behind him. I'm sure he does. Running off on that kid is one thing, but there's code. He knows that. He ain't Trelawney. Dutch and you pretty much raised him. I know, but it's done. Has Yo, for a while what, are you, what are you doing? Nobody else would have been welcomed back that easy after that long. And you know it. Maybe. But please don't you put that to the test. Uh, I never would. Uh, here we go. Okay. I think we need to head right up here. Yes, I remember this place. Moonstone Pond. We're going the right way. I should really be heading back over to Great Plains to see about Sean. It's bounty hunters who've got him? So Trelawney says. Javier and Charles have gone with him to scope it out. Pretty dangerous going anywhere near Blackwater. Right, but if he's alive, we gotta try. Of course. Look there. Rabbits. Maybe we should catch one to cook. Sure. Try and shoot one. You don't want to use anything too powerful on a small animal like that. Just ruin the meat. Best thing's a bow or a 22 caliber varmint rifle. I have hunted rabbits before, you know. Yes. And obliterated them with a shotgun, if I remember right. Hunt a rabbit. Okay. Luckily, I got my trusty bow. All right. Yeah, so Hosea, I mean, I'm not ready to make this call yet, but Hosea's self-triangulation there tells me that maybe he sees himself as the peacekeeper of the group. And that it's his responsibility to make sure that all runs smoothly keep people accountable we saw that a little bit in one of the interactions he had with dutch especially when, like when we were thinking about robbing the train and stuff so i'm just excited to kind of get to know some of these characters we just we don't have a ton of context yet at this point so oh shit hello sir you just passing through? Get the hell away from me. Okay. 
I'm not trying to cause a fuss, sir. Okay there? That's a fine horse you got there. All right. Be well now. No damn time for you. Best quit. Yo. I'm, dude, I'm going the same direction you are. I ain't following you. You ain't that important. Good job. All right. It's getting late. Wreck we should camp here. Sure. Well, then you get us set up. Famished. Cook that rabbit then. They're delicious on an open fire like this. Fine by me. <gasps> Plain game. You want some of this? No, I'm fine. I don't like eating this late. Okay. <laughs> After all that. Oh, nice. Cook multiples? That's good. I can't believe we're still doing tutorial. Mind blowing that we're still doing that. Okay. Oh my God, how much do I have? What's up, Kirill? get some rest I want to be up at first light to find this monster he better be worth all this drama What's your plan? Well, we'll see if we can track him, but we might need to lay bait to draw him out. Bears like fish, obviously, but they also have a sweet tooth. A lot of fellas bait, then shoot from the trees, but I prefer to hunt on the ground. More dangerous. But we'll have a much better chance of getting a good shot in. And if he bolts, we can start right off after him. Can you mix up this bait for me while I finish packing this up? Fish, berries. Tie it up in that rag when you're done. I hope you know what you're talking about. I grew up in the mountains, Arthur. I was virtually weaned on bear meat. Sweet. Sweet.